Welcome back to Book View Now here in Miami at the Book Fair. And I'm Jeffrey Brown with the PBS NewsHour. And I'm with a familiar face to me and to most of our audience, Ted Koppel. Nice to talk to you. It's a question of age, Jeffrey. It's about age? Yes, it's about age. What does that mean? Anybody younger than 30, maybe that <laughs> face is not so familiar. Oh, come on. All right, so you're here to talk about your new book, Lights Out, right? Indeed. And it is a book, I'm sure, long in the making, but as current as today's newspaper. It is, because while everyone is, is stressing, I mean, all these governors are stressing about uh, 10,000 Syrian refugees coming over here and the danger that one of them might be a terrorist of one kind or another. We are living in an age where someone sitting way outside the geographical borders of the United States having nothing more than a laptop computer mm -hmm. can inflict far more damage than anyone with a suicide vest. So we're having the wrong conversation. We're so having the wrong conversation. Yeah. We're focusing on the wrong danger. Uh, and in the process, not making ourselves look very good to the rest of the world. The real danger, which is the focus of your book, is cyber, cyber war, cyber the, attack. The real danger is that our infrastructure, mm -hmm. in particular our electric power grids, mm -hmm. are as vulnerable to cyber attack as the thousands upon thousands of businesses, companies, government agencies, that have already been hacked over the last few over the last few months mm -hmm. and even the last couple of years. What what spin that out? I mean, what could or would happen? Well, I mean, first of all, let me quote General Keith Alexander, who just the other day said there are only two kinds of institutions out there these days: those that are hacked or have been hacked, and those that don't yet know about it. Now, if something as vast as the electric power grid, which mm -hmm. we have three of them in the United States, and essentially they link together 3,200 electric power companies. At the center of all of that is the internet. Mm -hmm. You cannot control the flow of electricity, the generation and the delivery of electricity without the use of the internet. If someone can get into the internet, and it's a very complex procedure. It can take years to do it, but the Chinese are in, the Russians are in, and the Iranians are believed to be in. They could wreak untold havoc. And that havoc means, the potential impact means on all of us. Uh, not on all of us, mm -hmm. but even if they were to get just a part of one of the grids. The Eastern Interconnect goes all the way from the East Coast way past Chicago. We're talking here about tens of millions of people being without electricity for potentially weeks or months at a time. Mm -hmm. That is for, and you would think that an old pro would know enough to turn his darn <laughs> I hope phone that's off. yours and not mine. Well, right? it is. It's 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 your it's mine, right? Really. Yeah. You know, I, I I was thinking because on our show, um, on all news programs, we're reporting pretty consistently about computer hacks right. on different institutions of the kind you were talking about, banks, uh, uh, all kinds of corporations, the government. Right. There's a certain sameness to it, right? There's a certain, like, what's new? How do we tell it in a new way? Do we even report it? What does it take to report it? Do you see that happening to the country, Not either not feeling it, not understanding it, not paying enough attention? Well, the difference, Jeffrey, between what we have experienced thus far is we have experienced grand larceny mm -hmm. by cyber attack. We have experienced a huge intelligence vacuuming mm -hmm. of, what, 22 million federal government records. Right. What we have not experienced is physical damage. Mm -hmm. And the kind of physical harm that can be inflicted by a really sophisticated cyber attack makes me call the internet a potentially a weapon of mass destruction. You're also though saying that our government is unprepared. I'm saying our government is unprepared for the consequences of such an attack. They're doing everything they can to prevent it, mm -hmm. but the problem is the internet was never designed to be protected. Right. The internet was designed... It wasn't created that way. Huh? It was created that way. Mm -hmm. And trying to impose a 100% effective defense system on it after the fact is essentially impossible. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, okay, let's assume that something like this is going to happen. The president has warned about it. Former Secretary of Defense Panetta has warned about right. it. Former Secretary of Homeland Security uh, uh, Janet Napolitano has warned about it. 
if they're all that concerned about it, the federal government should be doing something to protect us against more than the after impact of a hurricane or a flood or a blizzard. This is totally different. Is it the same kind of uh, thing that they would do? You mentioned natural disasters. What, what should they be doing to prepare? It is not the same. If you go online, whether, whether you go online to Department of Homeland Security or FEMA or the Red Cross, they're talking about short-lived disasters. Right. They're recommending that you have enough food and water for two or three days, that you have enough medicine, that you have uh, a battery-powered radio. Uh, all of these things are going to be helpful for the first two or three days, but what do you do in week two? What do yeah. you do in month two? No plan for that. What about individuals? What should individuals do? Well, individuals, some of them, uh, this country is, probably has about two million preppers. These are not the same as the survivalists of 40 or 50 years ago. Yeah. Preppers are just people who believe in being prepared, and that can entail simply having a food supply of two to three months and water enough for two to three mm -hmm. months, but that becomes infinitely more difficult in our urban centers than it does out in the rural community. Yeah. Are you advising that to, to, to people, to I average am, folks? I am not only advising that, I'm advising that the federal government needs to be building up storehouses, massive storehouses of freeze-dried food. What they have right now are meals ready to eat because they only have a lifetime of five years. After five years, you have to throw them out. The government doesn't buy enough of them to handle the number of people who would be affected by a cyber attack such as the one I'm talking about. What does, what does, uh, how does this fit in with Paris, that kind of attack? Does it, does it mesh, of a, is it of a piece, or is it something that takes our mind off what you see as this no, larger it's, potential threat? It's, it's of a piece. The only difference is if you begin by accepting the notion that ISIS wants to inflict as much pain as it possibly can mm -hmm. on Western Europe, on the United States, then clearly if, if they were able to gain the capacity to knock out one of our power grids or even part of one of our power grids for a period of months, that would be infinitely more satisfying to them than blowing somebody up. To make a statement, a big statement. It would not only make a statement, yeah. it would cause chaos. This is a serious subject, but I'm wondering about your experience of reporting it. Was it interesting to do? Was it, uh, dare I say, fun to go into to what kind of people you were talking to? Well, I mean, the, uh, the fun, uh, to the degree that there was any fun, yeah. I love talking to the preppers. And right. I love talking. I spent uh, three days with the Mormon community uh, in Salt Lake City because Mormons, as a matter of long-standing policy, recommend to their members that they keep at least a two to three month supply of food at home and water at home. Mm -hmm. So they're, <clears throat> they're prepared from the ground up and the institution of the Church of Latter-day Saints is incredibly well prepared from really? the top down. Really? So, they're, so they're, they're an example of what uh, people might do. Not what people might do, what a very large organization that's been working on yeah. this for many years can do. Yeah. yeah. And the reporting of this also entailed, of course, talking to top uh, intelligence people, top political yeah. figures. Yeah. Yeah. Military and intelligence, government leaders, leaders. I spoke to every secretary of Homeland Security. And interestingly enough, although none of them had a plan, for dealing with the consequences of it, all of them, from Tom Ridge on to Jay Johnson, the current secretary, all conceded that this is likely to happen. In so fact, nobody argued with the premise. Nobody argued with the premise. In fact, Janet Napolitano, when I asked her about the likelihood of it, she said, and she was in the job for five years, very, very likely, 80 to 90 percent. And then when you said, so why aren't we better prepared? Uh, because. <laughs> We're not. I mean, it requires an enormous amount. Tom Ridge was the one who actually gave me the best answer, our first Secretary of mm -hmm. Homeland Security. He said, we are a reactive society, mm -hmm. not a preemptive one. Mm -hmm. The right. idea of, of planning for something before it happens, that's not what Americans do very well. Just very briefly, in 30 seconds here, does part of you still want to be 
doing the daily news when a big story like Paris happens? No, I, I prefer to leave that to excellent professionals like yourself. Oh, I, you, 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 I, I, I guess I opened that myself up. Well, you did, but I've been doing it for 50 years. That's I enough. know. Thank Very you. well. All right, Ted Koppel, thanks so much. New book is Lights Out. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeffrey.